Good evening, family. Good evening, everyone out there. I salute the veterans on tonight. All those young men, young women that committed themselves to protecting our country. Uh, those that are here and those that have gone on. I salute them on tonight. Um, I salute our daughter Latoya Mitchell and son-in-law Emery Mitchell, Navy vets on tonight, uh, wherever you are. I salute my granddaughter Adriana Darnell, Air Force vet on tonight. I salute Charles and I'm not sure um, McKinnon, I'll just say Charles McKinnon on tonight, wherever he's at, I believe he's somewhere in, in Washington, D.C. Charles, I salute you on tonight. And all the other veterans that's out there that have served, those that are on active duty, as well as those that are retired, um, Kerry Gillen, an Air Force vet, retired, I salute you on tonight. Um, all my brothers and sisters in arms, uh, may God bless you all on tonight as uh, we celebrate Veterans Day. Uh, we know that freedom isn't free. Somebody had to pay a price. And in many cases, that price was their lives. And so we owe them. We owe them our salutes on tonight, family. So um, as we get started... We know that um, there's so much to talk about. On last week, we talked about um, God uh, preparing to uh, deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And uh, he wanted the Israelites to remember that night. For they had seen all the plagues that God had uh, placed upon Pharaoh because he refused to hear the word of God. And he hardened uh, his heart toward allowing the children of Israel to be delivered. But, you know, uh, like the psalmist say, there will never be any peace until God is at the conference table. Amen? And so regardless of what's going on around the world, in the country, in your city, in your house, um, if God is not at the conference table, can I tell you, family, that there's never going to be any peace? We got to have God in our lives at all time because he's the deliverer. He will set you free. For who the sun sets free, can I tell you, is free indeed. So on tonight as we get started, we're going to go ahead and open up with prayer and uh, ask God and the, the Son, uh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit to come in, enter into this place and have the abode here in this room and in this word that when it goes forward that it will not return void so father we thank you for your anointing on tonight of your word that's going to go forward we know that it will not return void we thank you lord god for revelation knowledge on tonight we thank you for the wisdom that you're going to bestow upon those that hear your word on tonight show yourself strong and mighty in Jesus' name, as we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives, over that of our family and friends on tonight, over this Bible study, uh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that's tear down strongholds, destroy yokes, and remove burdens on tonight. So have your way, Holy Spirit, on tonight as we go forward in this Bible study. Again, uh, welcome, good evening, family. I'm Elder Lawrence Mitchell, Sr., and this is Majesty and Dominion's Bible Study Night on Thursday night and so for those that are, uh, are going to be listening on live stream welcome and those that are going to be looking at at the recording welcome also uh, we'll just go ahead and dive right into it on last week we were talking about Exodus uh, chapter 12 where 
Uh, we learned about all the plagues that God had uh, presented uh, to, to, to Egypt to show that he was God. And he um, plagued them with 10 different plagues. And uh, there was uh, nine plagues that I know that I, I, I discussed on last week. But I, uh, after I looked and reviewed the, 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 uh, the Facebook I remember that there was a plague that I had not uh, mentioned, which I think is very important. And that was the plague where God brought darkness upon all the land of Egypt. And the Bible says that the darkness was so thick that you could actually feel it. You know, if you ever place your, your hand outside of a car while, while it's moving and you can feel the, the, the wind uh, listening or uh, blowing through your fingers, uh, and that's how how thick the darkness was. But the Bible also says that in the children of Israel houses, the Hebrews, there was light. And we know that we serve the, the, the light of the world. He, he is, is, is the prince of life. And that's Jesus Christ. And because uh, they had a covenant with God, uh, God severed the children of Israel and separated them from the children of Egypt to let them know, let the Egyptians know that this is God's children, and it's a terrible thing to to mess with a child of God. Amen. And so, uh, as we move forward, we 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 go over, and I just want to, um, because I, I I finish by just reading uh, verse fifty one of uh, chapter 12, twelve, and I'm gonna read it again uh, because I want to expound on it. And it says, and it came to pass the self same day. That the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Can I tell you that we're celebrating the, the, the armies of the Israelites on tonight as well? The, the Israelites, uh, the, 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 those that came before us, that represented God, that, that, that followed God, that, that obeyed God, that, that made a way for us, um, uh, taking away and destroying the, 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 the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and all those different people who didn't serve God, they, they had to go and fight. And so I celebrate them uh, as veterans also on tonight. Amen. Um, because God army is never going to lose. Can I tell you that family? The army of God is never going to lose. So it's best to just be in the army of the Lord. And if you in the army of the Lord, then you're victorious forever. Amen. And so as we get started on tonight, um, I just want to uh, say good evening. I see see my wife out there, so I um, thank you for uh, joining. Uh, as always, uh, just so faithful with the Bible study. Uh, my mom is here uh, and listening also on, on Facebook Bible study. So uh, moving over to chapter 13, and, and I'll start at verse 1, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever opened the womb among the children of Israel, both of men and beasts, it is mine. So uh, God was letting Moses know uh, that uh, the firstborn, because remember, he's, he, he uh, allowed the firstborn of Egypt to die uh, to, to show Pharaoh that God is God, and that was the only way uh, that he was going to let the children go. When, that, when God uh, sent the plague of the firstborn of Pharaoh dying, he finally opened up his heart and uh, softened up his heart to allow the children of Israel to go. But it was only because of what God had allowed to happen with all the firstborn of Egypt. Amen. And so God here is telling Moses to, to separate uh, the firstborn because now uh, the firstborn that comes out of the womb is going to be mine of, of men and of beasts. Amen. And so Moses uh, rehearsed what, what, what God said to the people. And God had also told him that, you know, you should not eat any living, living bread, uh, uh, bread with yeast. You know, he said, eat bread without yeast uh, to, to commemorate this night because the Lord has brought you out with an outstretched arm and, and strong hands. And, and that was to show that it wasn't by man's 
hand, uh, not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the Lord were the children of Israel delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh. And so that's what the yeast represent, that the Lord delivered the children out of Egypt with a strong arm. Amen. And so he said, this is going to be a feast that you should remember, you know, so so it's going to be a law that we remember be remembered from generation to generation. And can I tell you that they're still uh, they still celebrate the Passover, uh, the Jewish Passover, as well as here in, in, in this country. We celebrate uh, celebrate the Passover uh, during Easter time uh, so that we could uh, remember what what God did. Uh, not only for the children of Israel, but what he did for us as 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 his people, as his children. Hallelujah. And so uh and he did what 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 uh what God had asked him to do. And so um so God said that he would um he would ask for all the firstborn, you know, to to, to male, all the firstborn male uh, to be his, and so he asked that they be set apart. Now uh, they could redeem uh, the children of Israel could redeem their children, but it cost them five shackles, which in those days represent a hundred dollars, which was a lot of money in 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 uh, thousands of years ago, uh, which some people didn't have. Okay. Um, but they were able to redeem uh, their children. And if they had an ass, they would have to redeem it with a lamb. Because in those days when you sacrifice, uh, an ass was considered unclean. And so you couldn't use an ass to, to, to bring a sacrifice to, to God. And so uh, they would have to uh, redeem the ass with a lamb. Or if they wasn't able to, they would have to break his neck. Amen. And so as we move forward. Um, God had, uh, was going, he, he was bringing them out of, of the land of Egypt. Uh, and as they began to, to travel and, 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 and leave the, the cities of Egypt, he had made a comment that, uh, the Philistines, there was an area that the Philistines had, had lived in and he didn't want them to go through that area because there, uh, would be war and he didn't want them to be afraid and turn back and go to Egypt go back to Egypt where they came from. And that's found in, in Exodus uh, 13, verse 17. And he says, And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of, Phil of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Let's preadventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And can I tell you that when they went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt, that they didn't go uh, empty handed? Can I tell you that they spoiled the Egyptians of their silver and their gold when they left? They left with abundance. They left rich even though they were slaves at one time. And can I tell you, when God takes you out of a, a situation, when God take, take you and move you out of a circumstance, he's not going to just take you out of that circumstance, but he's going to increase and multiply his giving towards you. He's going to bless you with abundance like he did the children of Israel. And it also says that not one of them was feeble. Even the old men and the old women that left Egypt, when they left out of Egypt, no one was sick. No one had no type of disease. They wasn't suffering from, from Alzheimer's, uh, 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 dementia, or arthritis, or cancer. The Bible says not one, not one person, over a million and something people came out of Egypt and not one person was feeble. That was supernatural, family. Nobody but God could do something like that. Amen. Amen. And so moving on, um, Moses, verse 19 and 13, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straight, straightly sworn uh, the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. So Joseph, remember Joseph, uh, it was Joseph actually that, that, that was the reason the children of Israel were in Egypt because the Pharaoh who knew Joseph um, and respected Joseph asked that Jacob and all his family, which was 70 people at the time, come down, 
come down into Egypt and dwell in the land of Goshen. And so Joseph uh, uh, and his brothers passed on, but Joseph says that surely God is going to visit you. And when he visits you, don't forget to take me out of this land of Egypt and bury me with my fathers. And so they remembered that. The children, after 430 years, remembered the prophecy that Joseph had spoken, and they took him out of Egypt when they left. Amen? And so in uh, verse 20, and they took their journey from Sukkot and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them in the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that God is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path? He will never leave us or forsake us. He will never uh, allow us to walk in darkness because he's the light of the world family. So the children of Israel, as they was moving, they, they, they didn't have to worry about the sun scorching them, even though they were in a desert land. They didn't have to worry in the daytime about the sun scorching them. Or, you know, in the desert at night, it gets cold. Can I tell you that it gets cold? But he sent a pillar of fire. And in that pillar of fire, there was an angel. We're going to find that out also. And God always has his angels to lead and guide us in the, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Can I tell you that God has an angel assigned to each and every one of us? And it's important that you speak to that angel. That angel hearkens to the word of God. And so when you speak in the word of God... Can I tell you that that angel is hearing the word of God and he hearkens to what God is saying? No, he's not listening to me. He's not listening to you. He's listening to the word of God. And as he listens to the word of God, he proclaims and he does and he speaks and he moves on what God is asking him to do in tearing down strongholds, destroying yokes, and removing burdens in our lives. Amen? So just keep that in mind that you have an angel assigned to you. I know this for a fact, family, that everyone that's attached to my family has an angel assigned to them. Amen. So moving over to chapter 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihahirot, before Migdal, and the sea over against Baal Zephon, before, it shall, before you shall encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. Ha! You know, your enemy is always going to gonna, gonna try to put in your head and put in your mind that, 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 that there's no way for you to escape. Nothing you can do uh, to escape. God is, God is not going to uh, come to your aid now. You know, you're back up against the wall and you, now you don't have no way to go. But we're going to find out that God delivered the children of Israel with outstretched arms and a strong hand family. And that's why Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8, he tells us to be sober, sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. If we believe that stuff that the, the devil is telling us, then he has us. He has an upper hand on us. But when we speak the word of God, the word of God is life. And that's life he gives to us and wants us to have more abundantly. And we're going to find out that, that the law was given to the prophet Moses. But can I tell you, the Bible also says that grace and truth came through his son, Jesus Christ. And that truth is his word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but can I tell you that the word of God will never pass away? And that's why we have to keep that word in our hearts, that we may not sin against him, 
no matter what the circumstances, no matter what is going on in our lives, uh, 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 through our lives, we got to keep that word close to our heart. And speak that word out of our mouth as we believe so shall we speak uh, in in second Corinthians 4 13 I believe it talks about Paul talks about not only uh, just having faith but you got to speak it we got to speak it whatever we believe in God for he knows it but he wants you to speak it as a child goes to that parent and ask that parent for something Josiah and and, that, and, and, and and your mother is not going to know what you're asking for uh, or your grandparents are not going to know what, you, what you're in need of if you don't open up your mouth and you speak it. So it's important that you speak whatever it is that you have in faith in God for. And God is going to do the rest. Amen? Hallelujah. And so he's talking about that they, they, they're entangled and moving on to verse 4. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. Can I tell you that God is going to get his glory? All the glory belongs to God. All the glory. Josiah, remember we sung that song some years ago during Thanksgiving? All the glory belongs to God. Even though that was years ago, can I tell you today is still the same. All the, all the glory, all the honor, all the praise belong to our God. Man doesn't get no glory, no honor, no praise. It all goes to God. He's sovereign. Amen. He's holy. Amen. He's righteous. The Bible says that he's just in his doings. And his testimonies are true. Hallelujah. And it was told that the king of Egypt, that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? How could we be so stupid? We had them as slaves for 430 years, and now we've let them go. We allowed them to leave. Who's going who's gonna to build your cities now, Pharaoh? Because you, now you don't have no more slaves. Surely the Egyptians are not going to do it. Because they're not slaves. And so Pharaoh made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand, celebrating, thanking God, giving him glory, regardless of what the enemy is trying to do, regardless of what people are saying. Whatever the plan God has for you, can I tell you that it shall come to pass? All of his good pleasure will be done. And as the people is reciting all of this to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, about how he then messed up and he blew it by letting the children of Israel go. Uh, that's what hardened his heart. Because the scripture says, the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And how many times did Moses and Aaron go before Pharaoh to t ask him to let the people go? And he refused time after time after time. And there's so many people today that's refusing to hear God's word. And that word is being recited to them time after time after time. And their hearts are still hardened. And they don't want to let the people go. This was a religious war. It was Egypt's God trying to do battle. And I say trying because it was no victory for Egypt's God. Osiris, who was supposed to be the giver of life. But we know that it couldn't have been a giver of life because it couldn't save none of the firstborn uh, children of, of Egypt. Going up against our God. 
who is the creator of heaven and earth, and he created us in his image and in his likeness. He created us male and female. He created them. And that's why we know we have the victory. Amen. And so he took, the in verse 7, and he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping, in camping by the sea beside Pihahirat before Belzaphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Hallelujah. They knew exactly what they was looking at. But can I tell you that we are children of faith. We don't look, worry about what we see. I know what, it, what they was looking at. Seemed like it was over for them. But we walk by faith family and not by sight. No matter what it looks like, sounds like or feels like. We're going to trust God. Amen. Scripture says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. And surely Pharaoh did not see what was getting ready to happen to him. The devil does not see what's going to happen to him when he messes with one of God's children. One of God's chosen children. And so the people said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? And the reason why they were saying that is because keep in mind that they didn't have the same uh, cultural practices as the Egyptians. The Egyptians entombed their people and put them in, in, into tombs. But the Israelites buried their people. And so they were saying, hey, because there was no graves in Egypt, uh, you want us to come out here in the wilderness and die? And so they goes on, and they go on to say, "Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, Moses, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it has been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Now that sounds like a people that don't have no faith in God. After all the things they seen in Egypt with God uh, using Moses and, and Aaron to perform these miracles and, and bring these plagues. And, 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 and when, when the e Egyptian cattle died and the cattle stayed alive in, in Goshen, uh, when the darkness came upon the land and, 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 and the light was in the houses of, of, the, Israel, of the Hebrew children, the Israelites, um, when, when the swarm of flies came over all the earth, but in the land of Goshen, there were no uh, swarms of flies. They still, they still refuse to trust God. And we're going to find out that's why God had to give the law to Moses. And he gave him uh, Moses other laws uh, uh, for uh, administration of morality and uh, uh, civilization because they were uncivilized. They had been slaves for 430 years and they didn't know that God was bringing them into a land flowing with milk and honey where they were, where they were going to be the head and not the tail, where they were going to be above only and not beneath, where they were going to be able to lend and not have to borrow. They didn't understand those promises of God. And so they, they, they're arguing and fussing with Moses because they think they're getting ready to die. Just like a lot of family members and friends argue and fuss when you try to encourage and support them. They'll tell you, um, did not, I, I did not uh, tell you I couldn't do it. Did not tell you I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't handsome enough. I wasn't wise enough. Didn't I tell you to leave me where I was? 
Do you know that we have family members that's telling us that same thing tonight? To leave them in slavery? To let the enemy have his way with them? Because they don't believe and trust God to do what he said he would do? Because they don't believe that God is able to do what he said he's going to do? Through his son Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. And so look what Moses says. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. And fear ye not. Uh, I believe it's like 365 times you find in the Bible, Fear ye not. Don't be afraid. God is always telling his children, uh, Don't be afraid. Fear not. Whatever it is that you're going through, and I'm talking to myself, whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're dealing with, fear not. And Moses is reciting this to the children of Israel. Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Can I tell you that we don't have to do anything but stand still? And see the salvation of the Lord. And, and when we talk about salvation, I'm not just talking about being saved from going to hell. I'm talking about having prosperity with your finances. I'm talking about having prosperity with your health. I'm talking about help, having prosperity with your mind and your spirit and your soul. That's the salvation that Moses was talking about. He said that God will show you today for the Egyptians who you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. I don't know who I'm talking to, but can I tell you that all the things that you've been going through, maybe with finances, debtors, creditors, whoever, in relationships, on, on, on a job or a business, can I tell you when God delivers you, you will see that situation, that person, that circumstance, no more forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God delivered me from the crack cocaine addiction, can I tell you when he delivered me from that and brought me over on dry land that I have never seen that situation forever? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will fight you for you and you shall hold your peace. Don't worry about what, what, what people are saying or what people are doing or, or, or how the enemy is trying to come against you. The battle belongs to the Lord. And a lot of times we get ourselves in situations and circumstances because we speak too soon. We have to sometimes learn how to hold our peace and let God fight for us. He's wiser. He's smarter. Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Moses, why are you bringing this to me? You have the power. You have the ability to speak those things that are not as though they are. He said, But lift Thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Wow. Look at God. Supernatural. Open up a, a, a sea. Can I tell you, if you speak to that mountain, and have no doubt in your heart, but believe what you say shall come to pass, you could tell that mountain to be thrown into the, cast into the sea, and it will listen to what you're saying. Whatever that mountain is. Whatever that situation is. Whatever that circumstance is in your life. Whoever is bothering you. Whoever is getting on your nerve. Speak to that mountain. Of anxiety and fear. And frustration and disappointment. And worry. Speak to those mountains in your life. And they got to move. When you believe in your heart. When you pray. Believe what you say shall come to pass. 
Josiah, and you shall have whatever you say, Brittany, Minister Skinner, Darlene, Mama. And I behold, I will, and I behold, I, this is God talking, and I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get my honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten my honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, remember I told you about that angel that, that God has assigned to you? God has legions of angels. And the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went be behind them. He was in front of them. And then he moved himself and, and went behind the children of Israel. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to those, so that one came not near the other all the night long. Can I tell you that weeping may endure for a night, family, but joy come in in the morning. I know they were afraid. And I know sometimes people are afraid of circumstances and situations on their job and, and with their businesses, hoping, you know, uh, thinking that they might fail. But I cannot tell you that weeping may endure for a night, but joy truly will come in the morning, even in the loss of a loved one. We know that it hurts, but God will give you beauty for ashes. We just got to trust him, family. And so Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all the Pharaoh horses with his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire. God's eyes are, are watching us. He's watching over us. He's not going to allow the enemy to do us anything with all this craziness that's going on in, in, in society right now. All this craziness that's going on in society right now um, with, 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 with politics, you know, and, 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 and all the hatred and the racism with the, uh, the Proud Boys and the Boogaloos and the Nazis and, and, and the KKK and uh, the, um, all of the communists. Can I tell you that God is not going to allow them to do his children, us, anything? He will fight our battles. He will destroy them. And there's so much that's happening in the world now, family. Uh, we have to be prepared because the world is getting darker and darker. But in the houses of the children of, of Israel, in the houses of God, can I tell you that there's light? I was just looking at the news feed. And you know, when you read the news feed, it's always negative. It's always negative. Uh, I was looking at the news. They say that NASA, NASA is tracking a thousand foot tall asteroid. That's headed toward Earth. Right now. There's a, a thousand foot. And we don't know how wide it is. But it's a thousand feet long. Headed toward Earth. Here in Birmingham. A nine year old girl was shot yesterday. Uh, uh, got caught up in a cross, crossfire. Over there in Hawaii. A six year old girl was who was missing. They, they now have arrested the adopting parents for murder. The, 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 uh, the Republicans who supported uh, the, the, the president's infrastructure bill, the 13 Republicans, are receiving death threats because they want our streets and our highway, highways and our roads to be rebuilt. The, 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 the enemy is threatening to kill them. The enemy wants to kill you. But God is going to preserve your life. 
And he's bringing you into a land flowing with milk and honey. Giving you the abundance of everything. It was talking about the 5.9% increase in Social Security and, and VA pensions. And then it came and, and then the news took, took a, 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 a negative spin and put on it and said, well, you're getting the 5.9% 5, 5 increase, but the inflation for the last 30 years is going to take all of that away. That may be true, but we're not trusting in the economy. We're trusting in our God. Because he's the one that owned the cattle on a thousand hill. And he shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And what about the, the astro, astro world festivities? 50,000 people out there and nine of them are dead right now. Uh, it got to the point where they was trying to rush the stage and it started crushing people and people were, were, were hurt and, and nine people died. What about the COVID that's increasing in the blue states where the people are anti uh, mass They don't want to listen to what, what the uh, CDC has to say. And now the, the, the COVID-19 virus is on the increase and the hospitals are being filled up in those states. And then you got those that don't even want to talk about how slavery impacted this country. They want it to be hidden. And if you talk about it, a principal was fired for, for, for mentioning anything to do with, with slavery. And then it was this river, the Th Thames, Thames River, that was pronounced dead biologically uh, in 1957. But let me show you what God does. Can I tell you that now there's sea life in that, in that uh, river that they say was dead? Because God does things in his own time. And God performs miracles, family. My wife and I was looking at Shark Tank the other night and uh, there was... Uh, you know, that's where people go on to, to try to um, advertise their they, they inventions, their business, uh, to try to make deals with the sharks so that they can, you know, improve. Um, and it was talking about oysters. Did you know that oysters filter the, the ocean waters? Listen to what it says. A mature oyster can filter up to 1.3 gallons of, of 5 liters of water per hour. The quantity of water is equal to 30 gallons of water every day. It is, however, said that the oysters filter the entire water of the Chesapeake Bay in less than a week. Since the population of oysters is decreasing day by day, it will take a year for the oysters to filter all the water in the bay. You must be wondering, how do oysters filter water? Well, oysters are generally known as filter feeders as they pump a significant amount of water through their bodies. When the pump water, <coughs> when they pump water through their gills, algae and plankton and several other tiny par particles get trapped in their gills. In this way, these many particles go through the mouth and esophagus and stomach of the oyster. Did you know that they had a, a esophagus and a stomach? <coughs> Excuse me. When the feed is digested in their body, waste material in the form of feces is released through the anus. The released it waste hangs in a sequence from the oyster, motioning to and fro in the water current. When the line breaks, it settles down the water, followed by more lines. It is how the oyster filters water. And we want to, uh, man, when I say we, man wants to give all the glory to man for doing things and creating things. How could this be something that man has created? This is God. God made everything good in his time. He rested on the seventh day when he seen what he made was good. Amen. And so Moses stretched out his hands over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. And all that night he made the sea dry land and the water was divided. 
and it well I, I covered that where it, the wall they went through the midst of the water and on the both sides right hand and the left side uh, the children could see the water of the sea but how many know that it didn't touch them and as the and as the Egypt's Egyptians began to pursue them look what verse 25 says it took off their chariot wheels and they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fight it for them against the Egyptians can I tell you that the enemy knows that God is fighting on your behalf they were so disgruntled and and, and scared because now they can't even go forward. They don't. They don't. They wills. You know. Remind me of, of, of the Flintstones with, with in, a, in in the, in the Stone Age, where where you see Bonnie and and, and Fred riding their, their, their little chariot, and then the wheels, uh, the stone wheels fall off. That's how how Pharaoh was. It remind me of the Flintstones. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, and the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots, and the horsemen, and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not one much as one, not so much as one of them left. Out of 600 that went out, not one returned to Egypt. That's something to celebrate today, family. Out of 600 enemies, not one enemy was left. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of, e of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. When the people got across the, the sea, when they looked on the seashores, all they seen was dead Egyptians. Wow. So I'm going to go over to a passage of scripture that I know that you all are familiar with. Psalms 91. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading at verse 4. Psalms 91. He shall cover thee with feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thy behold and see the, and see the reward of the wicked. Isn't that what happened in, at the Red Sea? Only with their eyes did they behold the reward of the wicked. And we are God's children. He, he, that same promise is for you and for, for me on tonight, family. Only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand in this crazy world that we're in. But it shall not come nigh your dwelling. Amen. And so Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Hallelujah. Moses and the people believed. Amen. And so in closing... <clears throat> I want to go over to to Luke chapter 
chapter 2, over to Luke chapter 2. And this is about our Lord, uh, the baby Jesus. How when he, uh, they were in, in Bethlehem, <clears throat> and, and there was no room at the inn, and so they found uh, they they found him in a manger where where Mary had baby Jesus, and um, we we'll start reading that at Luke verse ten. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, with them uh, the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And you know, God had... Has, the angel has spoke to Mary and said, Hail Mary, for you are blessed and highly favored. And as God was, uh, she was filled with the Spirit, God was ministering uh, through the Spirit. And Mary began to see for herself that she was truly blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And God wants us tonight to see, family, how blessed we are. Regardless of what's happening around us, regardless of what the enemy is trying to do to us, can I tell you that the victory belongs to God? Victory is always God's. And over in Luke 2, you know, Paul talked about how he was sent to, to the Gentiles. But can I tell you that Jesus Christ was sent to the Gentiles as well? Look in verse 22, uh, I mean, uh, Luke 2, verse 32. He says, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. That was Jesus. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. So God, he blesses not only the Jews, but the Gentiles, those who have been uh, brought into the fold of God, um, being of Abraham's seed through faith. Uh, once we have the faith to believe um, and we speak it with our mouths and believe that that Jesus is Lord and we believe that we have been saved uh, by by Jesus blood his precious blood and that his his father raised him from the dead and now he's seated at the right hand of the father making intercession for us when we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths the Bible says and then we are saved but not only us but our our family our, our sons our daughters our our, our mothers, our fathers, and friends and relatives uh, are, are, are saved when when they do that same thing. But it's important for them to open their mouths and confess that Jesus is Lord. And when they do that, family, they become blessed instantly. Of course, we still go through things. We still have to deal with uh, this wicked world. We still have to deal with society as a whole. We still have family members that 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 um that needs to be saved, and that's why God has reconciled us to Himself, so that we can be have the ministry of reconciliation and go out there and tell somebody about this this wonderful God that we serve. Hallelujah. And when we do that, when we begin to 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 see God and and understand who He is and 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 who his son is and who the Holy Spirit is. Then God begins to bless us and extend his, his arm, his right arm 
hallelujah, to, uh, toward us to let us know that, that he has us. Whatever it is that we're going through, he's going to bring us through it, family. He's no respecter of person. If he did it for the children of Israel, who he called his children, he'll do it for us, who he also called his children. One faith and one baptism in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so when we plead the blood, when we plead the blood, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And one day he's coming back for a people who believed him and trust him and, and waited upon him. Stand still on tonight and see the salvation of the Lord, family, and hold your peace. No matter what they're saying, I don't care if they're talking about you. Regardless of what they're saying, God hears everything. He sees everything. And all he has to do is open up his mouth and speak a word. Live. And can I tell you, you will live. You know, Lazarus was a dead situation. For four days, Lazarus had been dead. And he called Lazarus by name because if he would have, if he would have just said, come out, everybody in the graves would have came out. He called him by name. He said, Lazarus. Come forward. And Lazarus, who was dead, came out with life. And that life was more abundantly. So be encouraged on tonight, family. Um, know that, 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 that God is not marked. He sees everything that's going on. He sees what's happening in our country with all the hatred and um, people, you know, working for minimum wages and uh, working, people being worked as slaves. Uh, one, I, I was listening to the news and this, this, this uh, guy who was paralyzed uh, was working for the school district and he had three other jobs, three other jobs besides that job. So that tells me that that job that he was on wasn't, he wasn't hardly making any money. But yet these people want you to work like a Hebrew slave and make brick without straw. But God is not Mark. He's going to bring us out of these situations that uh, we find ourselves in and sometimes we bring ourselves into situations. Sometimes it's not the enemy. Sometimes it's us that causes situations and circumstances in our lives. And we say it's the devil, but sometimes we give him too much credit. Sometimes it's that stubbornness and that selfishness that's inside of us that we got to uh, repeal and, 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 and speak to that it be gone. And speak it out. Because the Spirit gives life. And when we become saved, we are filled with the Spirit of God. And greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. No, Satan can't dwell in you because the Holy Spirit dwells in you. But He can dwell outside of you. And as you're speaking things and saying, Things that, that, that's ungodly and things that uh, that's against the will of God. He hears what you say and so he brings it upon you. And sometimes we bring things upon ourselves. It's called psychosomatic. And the body says, did you hear him say uh, that he's crazy? Let's get these cells to working so we can make him crazy. 
and then and then it's you know anti-immune system uh, disorder anti-immune disorder is where your cells start working against you stress anxiety that comes from condemnation and there's no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so let's walk after the spirit and follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and stand still on tonight, family, and see the salvation of the Lord. For he's bringing you out of that situation, that circumstance, whatever you find yourself in on tonight, Darlene, Brittany, Mr. Skinner, Rita. <clears throat> whatever you find yourself in a, a situation on tonight, mother, do y'all hear what I'm saying? So I thank all you all who joined us on tonight. Um, as we move through Exodus, uh, how many know that when God brings you out, and I said this earlier, when God brings you out of a situation, he supplies your need. On next week, we're going to talk about the manna and the quail. The people was, was hungry, and they began to, to murmur and complain because they didn't have anything to eat. And God sent quail and manna to the people of, of Israel for them to eat. Hallelujah. And God is sending you finances, blessing you with prosperity, blessing you with health and strength, and, and blessing your spirit so your spirit can go from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Hallelujah. So be encouraged on tonight, family, as we close. And I'll go ahead and close with prayer on tonight. And I thank God for all those who have joined on tonight. Lord God, I ask that you would visit them. I thank you, Lord God, that you would increase them on tonight. And may he who supplied seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed that they have sown and increase the fruit of their righteousness on tonight. For we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus on tonight, Lord God. So we thank you for your word on tonight, Lord God. We thank you that it has not returned void, Lord God. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your, the power of your might. I thank you for your angel that you've assigned to each and every one that's on this call, uh, Facebook call on tonight, Lord God. I thank you that you're blessing and going out and they're coming in. And no weapon, come on, say that with me, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and thank God. All right, family, be, be blessed on tonight, and I'll talk to you guys on next week. And make sure you share with someone. Let them know that God is still on the throne. And he's, and he's doing miracle signs and wonders. Hallelujah.